Hello, this is Shiley from Sheepishly Made. We are doing the felting tutorial for the Ocean Overlook wool painting. This is a two-part tutorial. The first part is the wet felting for the background. The second part, we will be needle felting some details. So this is a finished piece. Every piece is a little bit different. I like to make variations. Um, and here are some of the tools we'll be using. Um, you need a large bath towel, some bubble wrap, And then I also use a hand towel and I have the fabric mesh. The fabric mesh you will lay over top of your piece as you're felting it to keep all the fibers together. And we have our soap and my handy water bottle. The soap I'm using is a goat milk soap bar. It's unscented. And then I have a water bottle to help wet down the area. It just has a couple holes poked in the top. And my roller, you can use a foam roller um, or other type of roller you have for the project. Now we'll be starting out this project by taking thin pieces of wool. You just want to take your roving and pull it apart um, into very thin layers. You're going to start at the bottom where the sand is on our painting. And we're going to first lay these going up and down. As you do the layers, you want to alternate which ways. So we'll go up and down the fibers the first time. And then the next layer, they will go left to right. You just want to do a real nice thin layer as we will be doing several layers and it will get thick. So after you have a section of the tan for the beach, we're going to um, use the light blue and do the same thing. You can overlap the blue on the tan slightly at the bottom. And just keep pulling apart pieces and laying them down. And then you'll do a dark blue layer and then another light blue layer. Now we are onto the second layer of this piece and you're just going to repeat the whole process, but this time lay the fibers from left to right instead of up and down. Starting at the bottom, we do the tan and then we will do the light blue again, then the dark blue and the light blue. And then you want to repeat this process and then at the bottom um, we're actually going to add in some green here which is going to be our cliff for our overlook and I'm just going to add a little bit at the bottom This is our third layer out of four, so I just want to make sure there is a little bit of green underneath of the final layer. And we'll finish off with the tan. And then for the final, this is the fourth layer, final layer. You want to lay your fibers left to right again. Make sure you add in that green and the tan. Then I'm going to do the light blue and the dark blue and the light blue again for the sky. Now after you have all your layers, you want to make sure it's like the same thickness overall. And when you're satisfied, then we'll add just some details. So I'm just going to blend our um, bottom light blue section and the dark blue section a little bit to make our nice ocean. And so I'm just taking a little bit of the different colors and laying them on top of each other. I'll just give it a nice fade into each color. And then taking a little bit of the light blue and laying real thin pieces on um, the tan there. 
This will give it the illusion of the waves coming in and breaking on the shore. Just enough that you can see through. Now we're going to add a little bit of white in the sky to create a little bit of a lighter blue color to take it away from the ocean color um, and also give it some clouds. And we're going to add the white on the shore. You just want a little bit just so you can see through it. Because if you see, you can still see through the white and the light blue on the shore to the tan. Now grab your locks. And I like to pull these apart because they're really thick locks. Um, these ones retain their shape very well even when you pull them apart. But I just don't want them to be so thick. I want them to be a little thinner. So I just pull them apart a little bit. And then just add a few here and there. I like to add them on the shore where the waves are breaking and then just throughout my piece a little bit to give some white caps and I'm adding some real loose locks in the sky just as some clouds Now we're going to use our yellow to make the sun in the sky real bright, nice yellow for our beautiful sky. Add a little bit of our light yellow in the water as a reflection. And I'm just taking some more white and making a couple clouds around the sun. And lastly, we're going to make some rocks. So I'm just taking some gray and making um, little circles of gray on our um, green there. And a little bit of black around the edges to give it some depth. And as you can see, our picture is really starting to come together. Now with our completed piece laid out, we will start felting. You want to lay your mesh over top of it and then we'll start wetting it down. So I have my water bottle. Um, and I have warm, a little bit of soap in it, um, but you want it warm um, to hot water. And then I just shave off a little bit of my goat milk soap into the bottle. You don't want it really sudsy, so if you're using liquid soap, use a very small amount. I'm just squirting water on top of the wool. And you just want to put as much as needed to soak through all the fibers. You don't want your wool sitting in a puddle of water. So I like to press it down, push the water through the fibers, and keep wetting it down until it's soaked all the way through. You have a lot of wool here. You created a thick layer. So it takes a little while to soak it. And I have just holes poked in the top of my bottle. So it gives me a nice light stream. So once you soaked it through enough, um, if you're using a soap bar, you can take it and rub it over the mesh a little bit. I like to do this to get a little bit more soap in there and it doesn't make too many suds. And then you'll start just gently pressing on top of the wool. I just like to press it out first, get my mesh nice and flat. You don't want to move the fiber so much at this point that it adjusts where you laid out your wool. You want to start out very gently and then increase the agitation as you progress. So just gently go back and forth. This video is sped up so it is a little bit slower than what I'm actually showing you. Um, and as you, as the fibers are sticking together, so as you can see after that little bit of agitation, um, the fibers are sticking together. Some of them, will, they'll still pull up, but they aren't going to all lift up when I lift up my mat. Um, you can tidy up the edges if you would like, or you can just leave them and you can always cut and trim your piece later. So I'm just going to lay the mesh back out again and then um, agitate it a little bit more, add a little bit more soap to it. So when your fibers are staying together and not lifting up, um, when you pull the mesh up, you can move on to the rolling process. So you want to lay your mesh on top again, turn your bubble wrap sideways and take your roller and roll the whole thing up 
and then you can lay out your towel I'm just using the hand towel here because I have a small roller and then roll the towel into your roll there and then you're going to start rolling it and this is the felting process we work in sets of a hundred so you're going to start at one point with your towel and roll it back and forth 25 times and then you'll do a quarter turn and do another 25 and then repeat until you have a hundred so you just want to make sure you're turn it, turning a quarter so you get an even turn on the whole towel Then we'll unroll it. And we'll lift up your mesh, make sure it's not felting in the mesh. Now you turn it sideways the other way with it face up and then roll it back up and you'll repeat the process. And then you'll flip it over the next time after you do a hundred rolls and do another hundred with it face down that direction. And then you'll repeat the process, turn it to the side again with it face down and repeat with another 100 rolls. Now after you got done rolling it 400 times, you can take your piece out. It's gonna be fairly felted together. Now you wanna do the pinch test. So you pinch it and pull the fibers up. Now if they feel like one solid piece, you are good with the rolling process. If it still feels like some fibers are pulling apart, you will want to roll it again. Now, some of the locks we place down, they're probably not as felted down and they won't be. Um, while you're felting, you can add a little bit of fiber over top of them so you can see through to keep them down more. But if you don't, then we can felt them down more during the needle felting process. But here, I'm going to felt again with my hands before we get to the final process. Just to make sure it's completely felted through. Now we're going to move on to the final process, which is called fulling. So fulling is different than felting. Fulling is the process of shrinking down your fibers. So this is, it's like felting, but it is more aggressive. So the easiest way to do this is to just roll your piece up on your roller itself. If you have a small enough roller to do that. There's many other types of ways to full during wet felting. Um, you can search them on, on the internet. I'm going to show you a couple other ways. Um, some people will actually ball it up and like throw the piece. Um, this is another way to do it is to roll it up on itself and then roll it just like that. It likes to come apart. So you kind of got to be gentle and roll it really tight. But if you roll it, a few times on itself, turn it different directions between your hands and it'll start to shrink. You can see it kind of wrinkles up as you do it. And when you unroll it, you can lay it back out flat. Um, just make sure before you set it out to dry that it is one total piece if you pinch it. But that is the completed wet felting process. So we will set our piece out to completely dry before we start the needle felting. You want it very, very dry. You do not want it to be wet at all when you're needle felting. So let's move on to part two, needle felting. So I have my completely dry piece here. I have a few different colors we're gonna work with. We're going to add um, a sailboat in here and just tidy up some of the other pieces. This one, I'm not adding too much needle felting detail but I'm going to start with my locks here. So my locks, uh, I didn't put any fiber over top of them. So they didn't felt down to the rest of the piece like the regular wool fibers did. So you can do a couple things. You can take um, a little bit of wool, real thin pieces and lay it on top. So you can still see through to your locks and felt that. Um, or you can just felt the locks down themselves. They usually felt really good. And just make sure when you're needle felting that you always have a felting mat underneath of your work. I'm using a um, wool felting mat from Bear Creek Felting. Um, I also have foam felting mats. So after you get your locks felted in, we can make the sailboat. So I'm just taking a little bit of red here and making the bottom of the boat. 
and then um, adding a mask with a little bit of my tan and then add a sail with some of my white and feel free to add different details and different things to your piece this is all um, to be unique and creative you can add whatever you feel like whatever feels good and then I'm actually going to add a little person here at the front of the boat just taking a little bit of my tan and just adding a little bit of a body shape right there and make sure you pull up your work as you're felting it every once in a while and here I'm just adding a little bit more detail with some blue around that bottom of the boat and a little bit of white in the ocean behind it just as a little bit of a wake um, I'm shaping the sun a little bit better got a little bit misshapen so I'm just adding some yellow to make it more round and lastly I'm going to work on the rocks just taking a little bit more gray making them a little bit more um, darker and prominent I'm taking some of the black and adding it around the edges to give it a little bit more depth and that is about the last needle felting detail I'm going to add to this like I said feel free to add more but that concludes the needle felting and our tutorial for the day so if you have any questions you can leave a comment on the video or send me an email i'm also on facebook and instagram um, you can find more of my kits like this on my etsy shop thanks for watching and happy felting